from the heart of Dubai, where tomorrow is being built today to the world. Welcome to the CTO Show with Mehmet. Here, we redefine technology and reimagine possibilities. With Mehmet, delve into the riveting realms of AI, cybersecurity, and digital technology. Experience the thrilling highs and lows of startups. Immerse yourself in the spirit of entrepreneurship and witness the future of business innovation being written in real time. Now, without further ado, let's tune in and explore the future. Hello and welcome back to a new episode of the CTO Show with Mehmet. Today I'm very pleased joining me from Palestine, Jafar. Jafar, thank you very much for joining me today. The way I love to do it, I keep it to my guests uh, to introduce themselves. I know like today we're going to talk about something which is, uh, you know, close to my heart. We're going to talk education and, and careers for the new generation, but I'll pass it to you now so you can tell us a little bit about you and your journey. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today. Um, yeah, I'm, my name is Jafar Shunnar. I'm from uh, Nablus, Palestine. And um, what I do right now is I am the co-founder of TAP, which is a career acceleration platform that helps the high potential people in Palestine and Jordan to, uh, to start remote careers at global startups. So that, uh, in a nutshell, uh, what we do. Great. Thank you again for uh, being with me here today, Jafar. And uh, a question that always I love to ask uh, my guests, especially if they are co-founders, whether on the technical side or on the business side, is I'm sure you have seen, you know, some gap um, to, to, to start TAP and co-found TAP. If you can share the story behind, you know, TAP and what have inspired you and the other co-founders to have this platform, like focusing on bridging the job gap for, for the youth in, in, in the region? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we actually see a gap from both sides. Uh, from the talent side, we, we see that there is a lot of people with high potential that have uh, a lot to offer to the world. Um, but, you know, because they, are, they live in Palestine, for example, they are deprived from opportunities. Um, and uh, they end up just, you know, doing any kind of work. You know, um, you know some people, um, you know, would have college degrees, but they, you know, work at, as a sales clerk or you know any any type of job that they can do much more they can offer much more so that's one side on the other side we also see companies um always struggling with hiring i mean hiring has been uh, has always been a, a, an issue for companies and um diversity also is, is is a big factor right so they they want high quality talent that is diverse that also is cost effective and we thought, okay, we have this talent pool in Palestine. We have these companies that are looking to hire talent that is similar to those characteristics in Palestine. Why don't we do something to bridge that gap and to um, help the talent and help the companies at the same time? Um, our approach is uh, we're, not, we're not a recruitment agency, so we're, we don't just do, do matchmaking. We mainly work with uh, talent to uh, make them ready for the international job. Um, and we also work with companies to introduce them. So, so, so it's, it's, it's not just a matchmaking, but there's, there's quite some work that we do on the talent side to make them, you know, ready for the international job. So we work on the readiness of the talent and we also connect them with companies. Great. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I love like such initiative Jaffer and, uh, because, you know, of course, uh, Palestine, Jordan, and, you know, I think. All our area here, all the MENA region, I can say, uh, we see we see we see this uh, need for such platforms, and definitely, you know, and I'm, as I told you, I'm passionate about anything related to education and spreading knowledge. So, from so so that's a wonderful story, and you know, uh, indeed, there is a, a a gap in the in you know in, in the job market, I would say, between these two uh, stakeholders, which. Is, the talents and the companies, but you must have, you know, now seen some major ones, I would say, um, that, you know, these educated youth 
in the area that you cover today face when they seek job? Because, and everyone knows, you know, especially in Palestine, in Jordan, in Lebanon, you know, even in, in the GCC countries. So the youth, they are very hungry for learning. But what do you think, you know, the main issue they face when they try by themselves to go out to the world and start to find find a job? Yeah, it's a great question, uh, Muhammad. The the thing is, well, looking at you know the many youth that we have spoken to uh, over the past few years, um, what happens most of the time is that they they go to college. Um, in in many cases, uh, college is about just education. So they they, they give them subjects um, that uh, in many cases would not be connected to the outside world uh, or to the to the to the uh, to the job market. Um, so college is basically just like you go and take courses and then you're you're on your own afterwards. So they graduate, they get their degrees, and then they are on this lonely path to find the job. They, they, they're just on their own. Um, no one is supporting them. No one is, I mean, even, even mental support is critical, you know, when you are just fighting the world on your own. So what we try to do uh, in TAB is that we are a pathway. We, we form a pathway from college to the job market. And we make it a very structured journey where, you know, you join in, um, you, uh, you, we work on your personal skills, meaning your communication, your, your employability in general, uh, and we also uh, work on enhancing your technical skills. And with that, you know, you kind of get a structure, you get a I don't want to. I don't want to make it like a. So it's like you know, so, so, uh, it's like a recipe that you take. But but it's all, it's almost something like that. So you go and you do certain steps um, with our support. You know, of course, with with our ecosystem that we built uh, uh, around the, the talent type that we know. So um, you know, we, we 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 connect you with mentors. We connect you with career coaches. We connect you with. Um, um, employability coaches. Uh, we help. We help you um, learn how to pass interviews, how to network with people, um, how to you know impress people when you speak, and so on. And then that um, that journey um, increases the likelihood of you getting a job significantly. Um, and at the end, what's even good? What's even better about? What's even what's even good about this is at the end we also connect you with companies that would be willing to hire. So we also build that side of the business, and we you know we we build a pipeline of companies that would be interested in speaking with our graduates. And you know when you combine all of this, you know you get a really nice offering that you know any any person um, in the region would want to take. You know because it makes their their life much easier. This is, this is really great. This is really great. And to your point, like uh, uh, people, especially, I mean, anywhere in the world, but especially again in our area here, uh, in, I know it from my own experience, right? Because um, when we choose to study something, a specific major, right? So we have some expectations on our own. And then when we go out to the market, like you live the shock of your life, right? So so this is something I helped. I know I lived it and I heard from from a lot of, of graduates also as well. So this is fantastic. Now, <clears throat> for you, Jafar, because you come from like technical background as well. So first I would ask you, we are living in in in, in a time where you know the demand of the skills, you know, in the market everywhere across the board is changing very, very fast, right? So how, especially in technology, when it comes to tech, so like what strategies usually do you use so to make sure that, okay, like we are now empowering these graduates or fresh graduates with the skill that can be useful, let's say after, I don't know, like one year, two years, three years, and how your technical background also help in, in, in selecting these skills that you think it will be high demand? Uh, so it's a great question, actually, Mohammed. Um, the technology advance, advances will always be there. Uh, you know, we see now AI has has uh, has, and it will transform uh, our lives and our careers. Uh, you know, uh, before that, we've got the internet, and, and 
many things along the way. So the idea is that we we need to teach ourselves and we, we need to teach our participants in the program that they need to embrace those technological advances. That That's as simple as this. They need to embrace it. They need to know that these are coming and um, just be ready. You know, when, when there is a new wave, you need to readjust your skills. You know, you need to learn new stuff uh, uh, to, to be able to stay relevant. And that's, that's what's most important. Um, always being able to transform your, yourself to, to, um, to match what's happening and to be part of the, the revolution that is happening. Uh, now we see AI, you know, we see that, uh, you know, everybody should be uh, adopting AI uh, and should be, you know, proficient um, with using AI. Maybe in, in two years or in five years, something new will come. Uh, the, the goal is that to, 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 to embrace and to be in peace with the fact that there will be a disruption and you just need to be part of the disruption. You cannot just stay old school and just, uh, it doesn't work. You know, you will be, you will be obsolete uh, quite quickly. I got you, Jafar, and you know, like I remember a couple of years back, uh, I was working with one company and, you know, they brought this fantastic trainer and he was mentioning to us that, you know, the, the I can't remember the exact, the exact code, but you know, the the best skill you can learn in, in this time, especially with the fast technology, technology advancement is to unlearn, unlearn and relearn, something like this. I remember this very, very well. Like, you know, you, you need you need to, to be able to uh, be fast enough to accept that, yeah, yeah, this technology was good, let's say five, or what, technology or scale, five, six years ago, that's perfect, but it's not fitting, you know, these days. And I always like give the example of, for example, you remember Java maybe, um, I know like I'm older than you, <laughs> but you know, Flash, you know, and designing uh, Adobe Flash things was was the main, and everyone was going like there, and then all of a sudden JavaScript came, and you know, like it disrupted, and barely you start to see Flash. Of course, the people who refused to unlearn and relearn, they paid that, and then they were pushing, pushing, pushing. So this is also an advice from my side. I give also the youth is accept that nowadays the technology or a skill mainly. I'm, I'm talking about technical skills more than soft skills. Soft skills can stay. But but it can change overnight. Like you and don't defend much. If you see like okay, it's it's uh, something that's continuing to take uh, traction. Don't fight back against it because you will be the, the the loser. And thank you for mentioning this. So now what I wonder, and you know, again, I'm highlighting how much I'm passionate about anything education and you know the marriage with education and tech. So if we think about uh, your company, Jafar, you you offer. Like an education technology in a sense that, you know, probably um, the youth and anyone who participate with you from, from the talent perspective, they can learn, they can have their courses, right? Correct me. So if you can explain the tech part within TAP uh, from, from the talent perspective, and also like what do you use? I mean, do you use any technology to match them later with, with the proper companies? Yeah. So... Um... We, we started TAP actually um, as a pilot. We, we didn't know that it's going to work. You know, uh, to, to give you more background, before, before TAP, me and my co-founder, Chris, we're, we're running an IT outsourcing company, typical, you know, thin vanilla, vanilla IT outsourcing. And then this, this idea popped up that, hey, um, instead of employing the people and then um, putting them on our own projects, we, we, we might as well just empower them and, and put them in other companies directly. So it was all. It was an experiment. We weren't. We weren't sure that it will work. Um, and then uh, when, when we tried it, we we saw that hey, there is. It, it actually could work. And um, uh, we started initially with a software development program. So um, you know, helping people become software developers. And then we added two new programs: uh, uh, digital marketing and business development. And initially, we we just wanted to um, we just wanted to see that it will work. And uh, our, our, our way of training is, um, is quite traditional, actually. So you go, th there is a trainer. It's all online, of course. There is a trainer. There is a cohort. There is, um, there is a curriculum. Um, and, and, you know, after you finish the training and, you, you know, you, we mark you as ready for a job, then our business development team, um, who's also, you know, who's, who's working on partnerships, on sourcing deals, 
matches you with with the right opportunity for you. So this was this was the, th this was how it, it, we used to function up until early this year, when we decided that we need to be more tech enabled and we need to be more scalable. And right now we are actually investing in uh, transforming Tab from you know a typical bootcamp uh, style uh, company to a tech enabled startup. And we are now building tools actually. So Tab will soon become a platform, a SaaS platform that uh, job seekers can use to, uh, to, 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 to do a job hunt, to do their job hunting more effectively. Uh, think about, think of it as the, your job hunting co-pilot. Um, and we can talk, talk more about this, uh, but, but you know, uh, people, people, yeah. people, people typically underestimate how, uh, the job hunting, um, process, uh, is you know draining and is you know is, is tiring. Uh, they think that uh, all they need to do is just go and apply to jobs on LinkedIn. You know we think of of that as something different, and um, we're building a platform to kind of expose our philosophy of how job hunting should do and to support job hunters in, in doing it effectively. That's that's great, Jafar, and you touched base on something, you know, I, I'm curious to know, of course, I know the answer, but this is for the audience and maybe for the youth that will be listening and watching us probably. Um, so, so the education part, I got it, like you, you're making it like more a proper education tech platform, uh, which is very straight, um, it's not very straightforward, I mean, from, from a um, technology perspective, but I think, I mean, the audience will get it. Now you came to the job hunting part and people think it's only in our region. And I tell them, no, it's not only our region. Actually job hunting is the most difficult thing. Anyone, any geography on this planet, you can go over it because, and let me put this straight. I know like I might have some people who would criticize this. I would not say 100%, but I would say 99% of the time, you know, just dropping your resume or CV, whatever you call it, through a LinkedIn, or even if you still go to the traditional web career page of a company, you know, you, you're just, it's like a lottery, right? So it's just like you, you get a lottery um, chance to, to, to see, you know, uh, and I hear complaints. The other day I was speaking with someone and he was telling me, you know, like I get depressed. I want to, for example, he was telling me, I want to apply to a job and you know, LinkedIn, they show you how many people they have applied already. And he said, you know, sometimes I just see the number and, and, and I walk uh, away from, from this opportunity. And of course I told him what they should do, but I want to hear from you, Jafar, like how you're planning or you, you are thinking about disrupting this, uh, this specific uh, task. Yeah, absolutely. You're totally right. Uh, if, if there is a job on LinkedIn and, um, you know, thousands of people will see it, you know, hundreds of people will apply. What's your chance of standing out? You know, what's your chance of, uh, uh being, um, looked at? I mean, we know that hiring managers spend on average 30 seconds or maximum one minute to uh, review a job application. So. How are they going to evaluate your CV? How are they going to, um, you know, look at your couple? It's, it's going to be like super, super, super quick. And most, most of the time AI will actually look at your CV and most likely, um, you know, take a decision on behalf of the hiring manager. So if you get into that game of just applying to jobs, your chance is very slim. Now, the way we see it is, uh, you should seek a, uh, a setup where you are um almost um a zero competition almost zero competition um what does that mean it means that when companies um have this role they think of you immediately or they think of you maybe and three other people not not more than that not hundreds for sure and how you can achieve that is that if you um if you network with companies if you build relationships with companies that um, might, they might not materialize, you know, uh, tomorrow, but they might materialize in three months. Um, and that's the, that's the approach that we, we try to, 
to change the, the mindset of people uh, around. So instead of going and competing with on, on the, the jobs that are open, go out there, find the right people on LinkedIn that are relevant to you, that are relevant to the industry that you want to work at, um, maybe who have uh, some similarities between between you and them. Maybe they are they are Palestinians at a, the, your dream company, for example, if you're Palestinian, or maybe you both studied at the same school. I'm just giving an example. Go and go and find. Uh, these people, network with these people, network on a genuine basis, you know, don't just make it say, hey, I want you to help me find a job. No, go go in a, in a genuine way and speak to them um, and um, build a relationship with them. Just have a coffee chat and uh, tell them that you're interested in their company and, and that you would, uh, you would love to work when there is an open role. And uh, guess what, you know, when they have an open role, they will think of you and they will they will they will send you the job description and you will apply and you will have a much much higher chance of getting in versus uh competing with those hundreds of people that's the philosophy that we want to instill in people and that's what actually works for us you know as a business that's what we do so mm -hmm. uh, you know for us uh, as as a company who wants to build relationships and who wants to, to bring employers um how like what's the likelihood that we, when we approach company X, that they have an open position right now? What's the likelihood? Like, right. but when we go and we, we build relationships, we, we build human relationships, um, they, they, will think of, they will think of us maybe in, in three months or in, in six months, on, on one year. You know, I have, for example, created relationships with people that materialized after one year. But when they met, when they met he realized, you know, they, they hired three people from, from TAP. Um, so that's the kind of dynamic that we want to transfer over to uh, the job applicants. That's fantastic. And if you allow me, Jafar, I will add my two cents over here because, you know, I, again, like something I, I try to help uh, as much as I can because, you know, the whole, even this podcast is to share my own experience and my guests' experience. So when you go to a job hunt, I call it like you are a salesman and you're trying to sell your skills. To the company and in sales you need to build the relationship first and of course what you mentioned is 100 percent like accurate i just want to add a request maybe to you and the request to anyone who is listening or watching this so when you build the relationship don't do the mistake that you know some of the gurus just between like quotes uh, they tell you yeah go comment on what they wrote on linkedin and you know and send them like you need really to be genuine like, and he really he, he'll see the AI will not help you like there are I see some plugins and I see some some tools over there like yeah we can see I use the AI sometimes to proofread for me because English is not my first uh, language right so it's my second language so yeah I use AI to just fix my grammar uh, grammar mistakes and maybe some typos that I have and maybe sometime you know, I ask it about the tone. Is my tone like aggressive? Is it like professional? So fix my tone as well to be like this. Nothing wrong in using AI. <laughs> but, you know, like I start to see like recently really something and you feel the other guy is, is not serious, right? So, so you feel like they are approaching you. You know what they want and see, like it's not shame to go and actually ask to connect with someone or like try to establish a connection, but keep it genuine, keep it authentic. Like, Absolutely. Um, like don't over exaggerate like uh, no really really try to 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 add value and all the networking experts that i've listened to i read books they tell you it's actually it's an apt one way so you need also to show what you can give at the same time because and giving is not only transactions money so sometimes you give your opinion sometimes you know you give a review so, so networking is, is a, you know, people think it's easy, but it's more complicated, I think, than, than, than it appears. So thank you for, for doing this, Java, because I think the youth, they, they need this badly, really badly. They need this. You want to add something, I think. I mean, what you said is on point, Muhammad. and, you know, research, I mean, that's why research is very important. So when you go out there and, you know, before you start, you know, just contacting people, you need to know who you are contacting. And you also, within a company, you need to find 
the right contact that is relevant. You know, the right contact might be, for example, um, well, ideally, the right contact is the contact that will be willing to speak to you. They have something in common with you. Maybe they are uh, from the same country. Maybe they uh, they did the same university as the one you did. Uh, maybe they care about the same causes that you care about. So, so you have to do your research. Uh, you know, for example, I I, I kind of uh, recently I've been connecting with more with people who are um, um, uh, interested of the Palestinian cause. They post about the situation in Gaza, for example. Uh, I know I I, th I think these are relevant people that I want to connect with because you know there's something that we can speak about uh, when we when we chat about things, right? You need you need to start conversations that are genuine, and you also need to show, as you said, yeah, that that there is. You're not just asking. You're not just extracting value. You're also giving something. In some, some, maybe in some cases, you're just giving kindness. That that's all. You know, you're just giving kindness or love. That's. I mean, at the end of the day, we're humans. You know, we wanna we wanna feel. Um, uh, you know, um, uh, love. We wanna be loved. We wanna be be, be kinded to. So sometimes it's just that. You know, just, just solidarity, love, kindness, warmth. That those are things that you know would. Enable someone to have a conversation with you. And these are the key to success. And then you have these conversations, you have a, you know, you make it uh, genuine, you make it authentic, and then and then you can say, hey, um, I, I'm, I'm interested in, uh, in, in, in working at your company because of one, two, three, not, not just because I'm just looking for a job, but because of one, two, three, because I fit the role, because there is a, it, it, this, what you're doing, your mission aligns with me. And that, yeah, and and then that person will they go and talk to their colleague and they say, hey, I spoke with an interesting person. Uh, maybe when we have this position open, let's talk to that person, and and it works, you know, uh, magically. But it needs patience, of course, you know, and this is what sometimes we're missing, you know, patience, um, patience, and um, you know, we we want to be hired tomorrow. No, it's not, not going to work out that way. Um, even by the way, uh, abroad, even in in the Western countries. People just don't get a job, a job right after they, they graduate. They spend months, and, and it's the same for us. Absolutely. And, you know, this applies just to also, like, hopefully they will get the job. And probably maybe if they decide to go and work in, in kind of a sales or marketing. So same thing, because you're going to, like, applying for a job, and then you're going to try to go contact some customers and sell them something or position something. Maybe at some stage you will become founders and you're going to try to fundraise the same thing. You're going to need to go and talk to investors. So the same thing applies. So, and to your point, Jafar, like you need to prepare. It's a, I know like it's a cliche, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint, you know, right? So, uh, same, same thing. You, you need to have this long. Uh, term vision, you need to have the patience, as you, as you said, I think this is the most critical aspect. I know sometimes it's difficult. I know like sometimes it's something, you know, you need it because, you know, from, from maybe financial perspective, you need it. And one thing I wish people stop doing, which hurts my heart, actually, I don't know who came up with this. I, we, I start to see it less on LinkedIn. Maybe you agree, maybe you disagree, it's my own opinion. When I start to see people, you know, posting it, you know, putting a post on LinkedIn and tagging, tagging companies and, you know, it will, it will not work like this. Like just tagging the company name, of course, the company will say, hey, you know the answer. Go see if we have opportunities on the website and apply for it. So this is my own opinion on this. Now, let's. Do you want to say something about before I jump to another thing? I mean, uh, if it's something genuine that you know that is, I mean, if you if you just tell them, hey, uh, I'm looking for opportunities, and you tag the companies, most likely they will ignore you. But if you say something genuine that uh, you know um, would make the company like uh, interested, or you know, it's thought provoking, provoking, or something that right. you know, oh, right, that opens their their eyes to to it, then yes. But what happens is that most people. People just abuse it and they just uh, say, CV. "Hey, I mean, I mean, this is my CV, and just you know, it's your job now to figure, to, to employ me." It's as if you know, "Hey, I'm looking, employ me." You know, I'm I'm here. You know, go ahead and employ me. That that doesn't work. And, and exactly, this is what exactly what I wanted to say. Like you need, and you know, like I prefer personally to find the decision maker. Like let's say I'm an accountant, right? 
Uh, so I'm going to find the head of finance or head of accounting in that company, and I'm going to send him directly. And it's easy today to reach and find, right? So it's back in the days, it was very tough. You know, in, in when, I, when I graduated, LinkedIn still wasn't, wasn't there, right? So, uh, or at least like widely used. So now it's more easy. You can find the people. You can, to your point, Jafar, like try to be genuine and put your emotions within uh, the message and, and you will do it. Now, I want to jump to another thing with you. Because, maybe, maybe, yeah, uh, please. Well, maybe just to, sorry to interrupt, Amanda, but one, one thing that, because you mentioned AI, uh, is, I mean, personally, when I see someone applying to, to TAP and they have AI, uh, they, they, they let AI write the cover letter, for example, or the motivational question, then I drop them, you know, immediately uh, because it, it it tells me that they have uh, they have not vested or they have not uh, uh, they they were not willing to spend the time to write something genuine in the motivational question, um, and um, uh, you know I I want to warn uh, all the job seekers who use AI to to rethink, you know, and uh, use AI in a in a subtle way if, if you True. if you if people know that you're using ai then you're doomed you know you're done uh, you will you will just be uh, put on uh, on the side list you know they will be caught right so so if, if again i explained my way of doing it i give it just for proofreading and for um you know adjustments i would say like adjustments i don't let it write even my you know all my uh work just because I want to make sure that I'm not doing grammatical problems. And sometimes, you know, I said, okay, if I'm very sure, I don't even use it. But, um, and sometimes, you know, like people ask me, okay, but you still allow the AI to put the emojis. I say like the emojis, the, the way I ask AI to put the emojis, because, you know, I, I learned this, of course, you know, I need to talk about learning and unlearning. I, I start to say, to, to try, I mean, to write to ChatGPT, I say, don't abuse the, <laughs> the, the use of emojis. Just put them for ease of readability. So, so this is to people to visualize something, for example. And even sometimes I even don't use it. So at the end, like AI is just a tool. So you need to put your soul within the words. And to your point, Jafar, I think like sooner or later, even if you can trick the system with uh, CVs and you know like this, when the time comes to the interview, like for sure, for example, now I'm not the AI. I'm, I'm the real guy speaking, right? Maybe <laughs> this will change in the future. I don't know, but I mean, at least now I'm, this is the German. This is Jaffer. He's, he's the real Jaffer. Like it's not, it's not the AI. But I mean, yeah. To your point, yeah. Don't don't over exaggerate the the use of uh, of AI. Now I want to quickly jump with you, Jaffer, on on something. If you don't mind, you wanted to say something. One thing I wanted to say, actually, maybe just a tip, is that video interviews or video uh, introductions are going to become um, quite uh, interesting and quite important. Uh, because, you know, if, if, people are, if people have these great tools to help them write, even if they make it uh, not appear as AI, but, you know, if, if everybody's going to have, like, excellent capability in writing, then now... Um, What's what's gonna be the differentiator, and how how are we gonna how how will someone stand out? This is where we need to be, and all the job seekers need to be more comfortable on the camera, more comfortable in recording themselves, because they're gonna be asked more and more to um, to answer. You know, what's your motivation for joining? Uh, just by uh, video, by a video uh, conversation, and yeah, that that's gonna be an important one uh, moving forward. Yeah, to your point, like it happened to me. Uh... I applied for a cohort uh, recently, and I, I was accepted. Uh, the time will, I'll announce it later. I don't know when the, if the time will come. But anyway, so to your point, so there are a lot of things I have I had to fill, but there are like two questions. They say, please put the link to your self recording, and I love it actually because these guys they 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 they, they need to find out who's the genuine applicant to this and this cohort is really good cohort you know it's free but it's it's it's, it's worth tons of uh, of of uh, you know gold maybe i don't know so i love and to your point i think this is the the the, the direction and the trend that we're gonna see the people will ask you to put your own uh, video more i know like some people in sales at least 
they start to do it when they reach out to their customers. So they record themselves to, to make sure like, hey, I'm not here. I'm not an AI written, uh, you know, spammer. I'm, I'm a genuine person. I understand who you are. I understand your company. I understand your need. And I'm just asking you for a meeting. I, I love these ones, honestly. Of course, maybe from a cultural perspective, still us here at the region, we need to get used. But I think this is, will be the mainstream. I prefer to see a real person, even if I'm not interested, rather than spending all my day putting things in, <laughs> in, in the junk uh, and spam folder. Now, Jafar, I want to ask you, because you match the talents uh, with companies abroad, right? So how you are seeing, you know, the, the acceptance of remote work globally and, you know, how do you see the involvement of uh, remote job opportunities in the region in general? Yeah, um, it's actually uh, growing, I would say, not at the, fa not at the pace that we want to see. Um, so there are still uh, challenges and I actually, I know that, uh, companies, some companies have, have actually reversed the trend and, you know, especially in the, in the U S I know many companies have asked, uh, employees to return to the office. Uh, so that was a bit, bit of a setback, but, um, overall, I think the remote culture, uh, it, it has like, I think it's the future anyways, um, maybe it's not accelerating at the pace that we, we want it to, to be, but it's the future. Um, and um, if you want, if you as a company owner want to get the best talent out there, then you have to be, you, you have to pr provide them with flexibility. Uh, Gen Z wants flexibility like uh, no, no other generation. They, they want to have their uh, work-life integration and they want to do things, uh, that they don't have more control of their life. Um, so you, you need to offer it uh, to, to, to attract the best talent out there. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, typically it's more startups that are, uh, we, we target startups mainly in, in our company because that remote piece is, is important and this is where they excel more than corporates. It's, for corporates, it's quite uh, tough to to navigate uh, the remote culture. Um, yeah, I mean, I hope I hope that it will continue to, to grow and I hope that, um, yeah, we're, we're going to see more and more uh, corporates even turning towards uh, remote. Yeah, you know, again, I understand some some positions they require you to be in the office. I understand this, like maybe because of the nature of the work itself. But anything that has, I would say, requires us to use our mental capabilities, right? Like maybe coding. Of course, I'm not saying like don't do these uh, team activities. Of course, incur I encourage people to do team activities, try to come together. But you know, like if you can give the job and, you know, the, everyone is aligned on what the company is trying to do. And I've spoke on this podcast to a lot of founders. And when I asked them, like, where, 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 are, where are the team members? They said they are all over the place. And I asked them, okay, so some of them, they are in the U.S. I mean, U.S.-based companies. Some of them, they are Canada-based. Some of them, Australia. I asked, okay, so I understand you have, like, people maybe in India, some people in Pakistan, some people in uh, Eastern Europe, some people even here in Egypt, Jordan, you know, like the main tech hubs. Um, and they say, yeah, yeah like, uh, of course, like we, they are working remotely and we don't have to monitor them because, you know, we have the proper, you know, <laughs> way to track the things and we have the communication channels. They respect, of course, the time zones perspective. And when I ask them about, you know, and they are startups. About people who live, let's say, within their geography, they say, yeah, because we cannot like treat people differently. If we give the flexibility to these guys, <laughs> we cannot like force the, the ones who are sitting in our same time zone to come to an office. Of course, like we have a base, we have an office and we use it like maybe for, you know, all hands meetings, team activities, like these kind of things. And to your point, Jafar, like, and I see it from Gen Z, you ask them, they say, oh man, like I can't imagine myself sitting in in a cubicle, how you guys, you were able to sit like this. And even sometimes I ask myself, I say, I don't know <laughs> how I was able to handle this. You know, you are just closed, no sunlight, like you, you basically feel like you are in a <laughs> jail cell. Anyway, so, so, so I agree with you. Now, I still have one question for you before we, we, we're done. Uh, Let me just elaborate yeah, please. Uh, Ahmed, on that point, because basically if, if, uh, you know, the, the top performing people, you know, the, 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 the creative people uh, don't, don't want to be um, 
told what to do and they don't want to be even if you if you try to, to put them even if you try to give them a I don't know nine to five job and you tell them hey you have to come at nine you have to leave at five or you try to tell them that you have to take your break at 1 p.m or you know you have to be there at, I mean the, it's not gonna work you know the, these people um, you need to give them trust and you need to give them autonomy this is how they function this is how they do their best if you box them in, in, in certain you know constraints they, they most likely they will leave they will not continue with you and you will lose you will lose them so yeah um uh, flexibility and uh, you know of course remote remote work is, is one of the main pillars is, is going to be essential to attract the best people if you want just want to attract like average people then okay go go ahead with uh, with your constraints and your uh, right right and here you know you just i remember like the best one, you know, I'm probably maybe a little bit uh, biased because I talk too much about the guy, but you know, he, he he's a respected, he was a respected guy. Steve Jobs said it better. It doesn't make sense to hire people, smart people, and tell them what to do. You have to hire smart people so they can tell us what to do. And this applies, like you know, when he, I think when he mentioned this, he was not only talking about like you know giving instructions and all this. Because, and he and another quote I remember, like he said, like like smart people start to to bring smart people as well, and to have to your point, Jafar, to 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 establish and to have this flourishing, you know, smartness in a way, like smartness, I mean, like you know, creativity. So you need to to give some some space for for uh, innovation and all this. And if you put these old-fashioned strict rules, good luck. Like as he said, like yeah, you might be able to do something, but not on the long run. My last question to you, Jafar, today, because you really, you know, also like maybe we didn't touch on that. Like, you, you've done this a couple of times. Like, you, you, you co-founded, you know, the studio before, like the, the, you know, the IT outsourcing and so on. And for sure, like by now, you have and you, you talk a lot to, to companies and you talk to the, uh, to the talents. So, if you want to leave us with your thoughts and your advice for fellow entrepreneurs so people who are interested in entrepreneurship especially in our geography what do you tell them um yeah quite quite some learnings that i had um you know one thing that i i think is important is to keep a long-term view um and think that success will take time to materialize it will like an average it takes takes 10 years uh, for a company to be successful. So you really, you, you really need to be invested for the long term. And you make, you make your decisions um, so that they support you long term. Um, you know, whether it's hiring, whether it's how you spend your money, whether it's what product you build. Um, just have that long term view because this is going to take a while. Um, you know, you need to have the patience and you need to have the perseverance. Um, and one thing also uh, that is important is always uh, go, uh, get into that journey with someone. Don't don't be uh, don't be alone. I, I, you know, with Chris, for example, um, um, he's been a, a very supportive uh, co-founder, and you know, uh, I typically, you know, I, I I strongly advise anyone who gets into entrepreneurship to 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 have a co-founder and you know select their co-founder well. Uh, because they're, they're going to be your life partner almost. That's a great insight, Jaffa. Like, uh, you know, the points you mentioned is the, you know, which I repeat also, and every single founder, you know, successful founder like yourself uh, was on the show and even on other podcasts because I heard, I, I listened to a lot of them. So they mentioned the same thing. When you start something, you have to put in your mind you are going places for long, long, long time. It's not like a, yeah, like I'm gonna do this two, three years and then I'm gonna flip it and then, okay, you might be lucky you are building something and someone will come and buy it from you. Of course, I'm not saying, but your vision should be for the long term. This is 100% because this is how you will be able, in my opinion, to to get the right talent. You'll be able to get, you know, even the customers will will, will feel this, like even your own customers. So I 100% agree with you, Jafar. And, uh, you know, I really uh, enjoyed the discussion with you today, Jafar. It was like very, very 
uh, I would say, rich conversation, enlightening conversation. And I wish you and TAP team, you know, all the success because you also have a cause helping people in, in Palestine, Jordan. And I know that you have the plan for the whole MENA region also as well. So, you know, I really congratulate you and the team on, on this effort and uh, wish you all the best. And this is how I end my episodes usually. This is for the audience. If you just discovered this podcast, by luck, thank you for passing by. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Give up a thumbs up also as well. And share it with your friends and colleagues. And if you are one of the loyal followers that keep coming, thank you very much for your support. I really appreciate it. And as I say again, always don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any suggestion, if you have a guest you want to suggest, or you are yourself a guest who want to appear, don't be shy reach out to me. Time zones is not a difference. I think I covered now all geographies from the West Coast on the US till New Zealand. So time zone, we can arrange it. Thank you very much for tuning in and we'll meet again very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hit that subscribe button. Share the show with your tech-savvy friends and fellow entrepreneurs and leave us a review on your favorite podcast app. Your support means the world to us.